Thank you so much. I really want to make sure when I begin something, I bring it to a conclusion. And we had not made a conclusion on the issue of understanding the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the, or, 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 yeah, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. We had said so many things and uh, we had even talked about how to receive the Holy Spirit. And this morning we want to look into the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to ask you to make some notes this morning on your iPad, on your phone, in your notebook. But make sure that you're, you're writing something that's going to help you move forward. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Our text is Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to verse 8. Romans 12, 6 to 8. And then 1 Corinthians 12. That is on the screen actually. Verse 8 to 10. Then Ephesians 4, verse 10 and 11. Of course, Ephesians, it can move further a bit because it clarifies why the gifts were, are, are given. Romans 12, it says, having then, having then gifts dif differing, is it differing or differing? No? Okay. Differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. Let us do what? Come on, talk to me. Let us do what? Use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So that's, that is Romans. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, sorry, verse 8 to 10. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another designing of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Please, I would like you to take note of that last part of it. As he wills. It distributes them as he wills. Not as we will, but as he wills. Ephesians 4, verse 10 he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things. Those of you who are, who are coming for morning glory, we, we, we have examined some of those things. I was so glad I was talking to a friend and I, I, she called me. You know, we had a meeting on the mountain with Napri team, a two-day meeting and uh, up to Thursday. And so one of us missed because she's abroad. And that she called me, I said, how are you doing? He said, we are doing fine, um, I'll be back home soon. Then I said, well, we have not met for a while. He said, no, I follow morning glory. She is 11 hours behind us. So when it is 7 here in the morning, you know, what that is, like 8 o'clock, where she is. And I was, so, I was so encouraged that somebody all the way in the eastern part of the, in the western part of America, the west coast is following morning glory. And she said, I know what we've been teaching. And we talked about feeling all in all in our service in the morning. Now, verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Until we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That explains the reason for the five gifts 
We call it fivefold ministry. Allow me to say a few things this morning before we come to the gifts themselves. Have you realized that today the amount of challenges and pressure humanity is facing is very high? You go to families, things are going on. You go to businesses, business people have to work hard and have to persevere. The economic challenges, the pressure of economy, I'm not sure who is spared. Terrorism has made even churches have security. We live in a world that is having challenges. The problem of globalization where whatever happens somewhere in the world can be reflected here same day. Characters and ways of life that have been imported from other parts of the world that are hitting us. At times, YouTube is teaching people how to do what they do. I am concerned about these issues and I'm concerned about what is going to happen if we don't have an answer to them? What is going to happen if we don't have solutions? Politicians cannot give us answers because they are also struggling. If you follow politicians, you discover the level of instability among themselves is too high. I wonder why I should be one of them. And because of this, um, we are going through all this, and yet there is, there is a powerhouse here called the church. This is happening in the world, and there is a powerhouse called the church whose power is, is not being used as much as it should. And I'm personally concerned about this. How you can have a car that can do 140 kilometers per hour and the maximum you give it is 70 or 80. And yet you need to get there on time. I'm concerned about this. This is why God did not leave us without answers. The answers lie in understanding the functioning and working of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If we understand each of these gifts, we shall go through all this pressure, all these challenges without fear and without being, being pushed down by whatever these things are. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 tells us something about these gifts. I want, I want us to pick a word from there. It says, but the manifestation, but the manifestation of the gifts of, of, of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. I want you to take note of the word manifestation. The word manifestation means showing forth, making visible, Manifestation, showing forth, making visible, or making known. So it's not a secret. It is showing forth, it is making visible, or it is making known. That is what the manifestation is. So the gifts are shown forth, made visible, and made known. And that is critical and that is important in what we are doing. Allow me to clarify a few, a few things before we come to the gifts. Look at the word charisma. I guess you have heard of this word charisma or charisma. People use it in different situations. But it's a Greek word that in terms of biblical language, it talks about the manifestation of the gifts of, of the Holy Spirit. Charisma. What God gives a human being in terms of gifts to be able to move forward. In the secular world, we use charisma to talk about something somebody has that gravitates people towards him or her. We talk about, oh, this leader is very charismatic. And I think one of the leaders people call charismatic is Obama. They say this guy is so charismatic. 
And you know how he rose to fame, don't you? When he, when he went to the, what do you call that meeting? Is it a congress, not congress, but when they meet as a party to, to, no, to nominate a candidate. And this African boy gave a speech and he called himself a skinny, he called himself a skinny something. And he said, a father from Africa and a mother from somewhere. That speech raised him up. And it gave him prominence. So at times, we look at the way somebody talks and somebody has a certain, something in him you cannot even point a finger at. The thing that gravitates people towards this individual, and we normally say, oh, this is a charismatic person. But in terms of the Bible, in terms of spiritual, charisma is a gift of the Holy Spirit. The grace given to humans by the Holy Spirit to be able to function. That's what charisma means. I think it's good for you to have that in mind. Secondly, these gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. They cannot be earned. You don't pay for them. Some fellow tried to pay for them in the book of Acts, and you know what happened. He tried to say, oh, you're laying hands on people and they receive the Holy Spirit. Take money from me that I may also lay hands on people that they may receive the Holy Spirit. So they're given by the Holy Spirit. Now the gifts of the Spirit are different from the fruit of the Spirit. I'm not sure whether I have this diagram. I wanted a diagram of two trees. If I have it, you can give it to me, uh, media people. Now look at that tree. This screen is not as clear. That tree has fruit hanging on it. Can you see that? Hey, can you see that? Now the fruits are part of the tree. When we shall look at the fruit of the spirit, you will understand. They come from the tree. But the gifts are different. If you have a Christmas tree, I'm not sure that you have it. People of the media, look at look, that's a Christmas tree. Can you see around the Christmas tree? What are those things? They are gifts, eh? They are brought around the tree, but they are not part of the tree. They just brought at the tree. These are the gifts. The gift, the tree is given the gift. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not the fruit in you. The gift is given to you by the Holy Spirit himself. Just like a Christmas tree having gifts around it. Now, the Holy Spirit is the governor, governs how to give the gifts, whom to give the gifts, when to give the gifts, and how the gift will function in the life of this individual. It's the Holy Spirit who determines. It is not you and me. So he governs the whole process. Please, this background information is important because I've seen people, God gives them gifts and they don't even know how to manage those gifts because a gift can take you to prominence in society. And if you don't know how to manage the gift, it can crush you. So you need to know when the Lord gives you a gift, how do you handle it? How do you manage so that you remain the same individual? Humble in whichever way. Thirdly, they are not optional. These gifts are not things we opt, we opt for. That you can opt for this gift and next you opt for another gift. They are given by the Holy Spirit. And they are not given for you. They are given for the benefit of the church. They are given for the benefit of humanity. So when God gives them to you and raises you so high, one thing you need to remember, they are not for you. They are for the body and they are for humanity. I hope we are together. Allow me to emphasize something on this point. You are only responsible for the gift God has given you. Put, write that down. You are only responsible for the gift God has given you. 
not for the gift he has given to somebody else. What he has given to somebody else belongs to that person. I, I don't think I have the gift of an evangelist. But I can do the work of an evangelist. Now, be careful. What did I say? Hey, what did I say? Be careful because you may look at your gift as not being as, as public as the gift of somebody else. Then you may become dissatisfied with your gift. That is sin. When you get to be dissatisfied with your gift, you're committing sin. Because it is not you who, who, who gives yourself the gift. The Holy Spirit knows why he's giving you that gift. Some gifts make people very public. Other gifts do not make you public. But they are all gifts. So be careful. Don't struggle. And this is why I advise you, do not be jealous of somebody's gift. Jealousy because of somebody's gift shows that you do not respect the gift God has given you. Respect the gifts in other people, benefit from them, and honor those people. I'm emphasizing that because of the challenges we have. Do you know that we need one another? Ephesians, I mean, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 14 to verse 21. For in fact, the body is not one member, but, but, huh? but what? I want to hear you, but what? Many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now, God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Are you alive this morning? Just as what? He pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? He's talking about a physical body. But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather these members of the body which, which seem to be weaker are what? Necessary. Even those among us with the gifts that don't seem to be big are necessary. You know, we should look at some of those things. But do you know there's this, this servant, this gift where people just do work. If you come here on Saturday and find the brethren cleaning this house, you'll be amazed. But if I ask you now, who cleaned this house? You, you may not even know, who, know their names. You may not even know. But you're comfortable because they cleaned and they arranged these seats. I came here very early in the morning and I found one, some of them still walking and praying and checking to make sure that your seat is good enough. But you see, if I ask you who are the worship leaders, you can easily say, I know so and so on the team because they are here. Even those which look very small are still critical in the body. Next verse. Amad Mamaliza. Verse. Did we read verse? Two? Okay, verse. Uh, oh, no, it's okay. Let's, get, let's, let's stop right there. Now, please. Mark this, God will hold you and me responsible for the gift he has given us. You need to remember that. 
he will hold you responsible for the gift. You cannot choose to use it the way you want. He will hold us responsible for the gift. Number four, spiritual gifts and talents. Let's clear this out of the way. Talents are natural abilities that God gives to people. Talents are not spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are those gifts given to people by the Holy Spirit as he chooses. So spiritual gifts are different from talents. Because some of us may be confusing our talents with the spiritual gifts. May the Lord help us in that regard. Five, the purpose of gifts. The gifts given to us are not just for jokes. They are for a purpose. First Corinthians 12 verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. That is the purpose. For the profit of all. Your gift is for the profit of all. Not just for you. Ephesians 4.12 we have seen that scripture already. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the gift is given to you for the benefit of all. All of us. The rest of us. I've given you this testimony many times. 1983, as we crossed into 1984, we went to Mumias. We were a group of us. There was the Mumia's brethren. We went to pray with them over Kesha. And there is something up, one of the brothers did which annoyed me in that, in that meeting. And I was very annoyed. And for three months, I was very annoyed. And in April 1984, we had a meeting in the social hall. And a lady by the name Margaret Wangare from Banana came to speak. And when she concluded, she said, there is a brother here. You were hurt late last year. And you have carried this thing in your heart up to now. This thing is hindering you from making progress. You need to deal with it now. And I was sitting on the front row. I thought she had seen me. So I went to this brother. And if she said, that brother who hurt you is in this meeting. I went to him. I told him, do you know you hurt me? Do you know when you said this, it pained my heart? The brother did not even know. For three months I'm suffering and he's enjoying life. <laughs> he had no idea. So he said, oh, you mean I hurt you? I didn't even know. So we prayed together. When we finished prayer, one of the leaders came and told me, hey, somebody is supposed to go to Maliki, Maliki somewhere this way, to Assemblies of God Church, to go and speak. And we are also held up. Can you go? I took a matatu. I went to Maliki. It was a night meeting. That night I preached. And when I met the altar call, everybody came, including the pastor. My anointing had returned. <laughs> I was back to myself. You know why? Somebody used a gift to identify what I was going through. And that delivered me and saved me that beautiful day, that beautiful afternoon. So the gift is not just for you. If you Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 and 4. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but for the interests of others. In other words, the gift is not just for your interest, but it's for the interests of others. Let's write this down, please. Basic requirements. There are some basic requirements, I believe, we need to have for the gift to work. Because I want to see the gift working in this house. I, I want to hear 
all these gifts functioning. I want to see the Holy Spirit using you and using the person sitting next to you in the services when we come together. Number one requirement is unity. Unity is required. We need unity. We are one body. The ear needs the eye. The eye needs the hand. Each part of the body needs the other. When the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, they were together in one heart, in, in one voice. They were united when the Holy Spirit came. I want to urge you, disunity and divisions are dangerous. Do not allow them. Even in your own family, if you disagree with any member of your family, please come together and sort it out. Don't let it remain for a long time. Where there is unity, God commands a blessing. The church was born in unity. The church will, the church will remain great in unity. There should be no pride. There should be no exclusion. We should be united. If you have, if you have, you have employees working with you, you need to be united. In any place where you are involved, petition, work hard for unity and oneness. I assure you, you will prosper. But if there be divisions and strife, then gifts cannot work. Number two, no stars. There should be no situation where so and so is the star, the one who knows everything. If he is not there, things cannot move. You understand stars? You are the only prophet in the house. Do you understand that? <laughs> if I don't prophesy, they will not hear God. As many of you as possible should prophesy as the Holy Spirit gives you the ability. Alright? So there should be no stars. Number three, love. Love. The gift of the Holy Spirit will work among us because there is love. People love one another. I pray for this house that there will be nobody in this house who will be an obstacle to you. That you will love each other. If you are offended by a brother just or a sister, tell them, please, you're offending me. Love. Even your own family, let there be love in that home. Even if there, is, there are enough reasons for people to fight and struggle, put that aside. Encourage and promote love. You know, love is medicine. I don't know why anybody would want to remove love and live with suspicions, hatred, roughness. Why would you put, give yourself a place where you know you will not succeed and prosper? Choose love. If we all walk in love in this house, the gifts are going to function here and things are going to happen like you've never known. I come to assure you. Hallelujah. I pray that the love of God will fill you and fill this house. I pray that even in your own house, there'll be unity, there'll be love. And you'll be amazed at the great things the Holy Spirit will do. Let's look into the specific gifts at this point. The, the gifts are as listed in the book of 1 Corinthians. We examined them and the, they are put in three categories. And you, you, you know three. You know three, don't you? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah? A cord of three cannot be easily broken. The number three it's a good number. Man is what? Spirit, soul, and body. Three. And I'm not preaching about that, but just, just something here. Now, each category of these gifts serves a certain purpose. Please, I'm laying this foundation. It's important. They're in three categories based on their functions, based on what God uses them for in the house, in the church. 
these gifts work together. Although there are three categories, it is possible that some of them are so close that you may not even know which one functioned. For example, the gift of healing and the working of miracles. Yeah? If somebody is healed miraculously, which gift worked? <laughs> are you with me? Somebody was healed miraculously. So you see, they, they function together. In the times, human distinction is at times a challenge. But for me, as long as they are working, my friend, I don't, I don't care. If they are working, let them work. Hallelujah. So the following are the list. Revelation gifts. Revelation gifts. This include word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Those are revelation gifts. Power gifts. Our screens are too small. Those things should be on the screen. All of them, like the three should be on the screen at the same time. I'm not sure that it's possible. So we are what you call power gifts. Power gifts include faith, gifts of healings, working of miracles. Those are power gifts. Then we have got what we call inspirational or utterance gifts. Inspirational or utterance gifts. These are the gifts where we speak. You know, the mouth works in this record. Now these are prophecy, speaking in tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Um, prophecy, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. <laughs> and in terms of prominence, public figure. Look, look at those nine, look at those three categories. Um, revelation gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, designing of spirits, and uh, faith, gifts of healings. Working miracles. Which one, which one is more prominent publicly? Working of miracles or designing of spirit? Come on, talk to me. You know, I was seeing, have you seen the, the billboards of Billy Benny Hinn coming to Kenya? I don't think you've seen the billboards. What, are, what have they written there? Healing crusades. Now the sick will go, I assure you. But you, you, you announce a meeting one day. Welcome for the designing of spirits. <laughs> Rumor grounds. Big crusade. What is the purpose of the crusade? We want designing of spirits. We want to design your spirit. People will not show up. Because they want to keep their spirits private. Now, when you look at, uh, let's go to inspirational gifts. I'll just introduce, then we stop. Look at the inspirational gifts. Prophecy, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. Look at those gifts. Those gifts are not designed for changing the world. I hope you understand. They are not, you, cannot, you cannot do a prophecy crusade. I'm not talking about the office of a prophet, but prophecy. These are designed for the church. For the body of believers. At times a believer may benefit being among, non, being among the believers, but these are basically 
to bring maturity in the house of God. God wants a powerful and mature church. So he has given this gift to help the church, you and me. We need prophecy. Now, we'll explain this as we move along. We need prophecy. We need somebody to speak in tongues. And we need somebody to interpret those tongues. This happens among the brethren. If you want to change the world, my brother, let there be faith. Take a crusade out there. And let the sinners come. Let people jump out of wheel, wheel, wheelchairs. And then the world will say, yes, Jesus is Lord. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. So, it, they, they are gifts that God brings in with the anointing and his blessing for the church so that the church can be what God wants it to be. All right? Let me mention one gift as we close this morning. The gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is when believers speak the mind of God by inspiration of the Holy Spirit and not from their own thoughts. They speak the mind of God. What God has in his mind by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I love that. That actually a human being can be inspired by the Holy Spirit to speak God's mind at a given time. Now, this is not for private. You see, you cannot speak God's mind privately. This is for the body among believers. I'm not talking about the office of a prophet as Apostle Paul says in Ephesians. No, I'm talking about the gift. Do you know there can be a prophetic word here this morning just for one person, but it is among us. Among us or for two, three people or for ten of us. I'll give you an example. When we were still up there before we moved here, I preached in the morning. And when I finished preaching, I had this in my heart. But there is some lady in the service. She has accepted to be married this week to some Muslim man. Because the man is wealthy, the guy used to have trucks, these big lorries, you know, carrying Miziko to Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo. And the guy used to move around, meeting the trucks on the way, and he met a, a lady in town here. You know what those guys, wherever they go, they want to look for people. Huh? And this lady came for service. And the Lord spoke to me and said, this arrangement you're in, you're entering in, is dangerous for you. It's going to hurt you. It's going to cause you trouble. Please stop it. Now, it's, it's, you, you know you need some courage to say some things. And you need some faith to say some things. And I just said, you're, plant, you're even meeting this guy this week. And you're not the first wife. He's, he's going to make your life difficult. He'll give you a house. You will have a home in Eldoret, one of his homes, but your life will not be as happy as it should be. Think about it and stop this process. When I finished, a lady came and saw me and said, who told you? Who told you? Somebody must have told you this. I said, no. I even don't know who you are. And she explained to me that she has gone through so many financial challenges and she just felt, since this guy has approached her to marry her, let her go. And God used that word to save her and save her future. I'm not saying you are here this morning, but I'm just saying the Lord can say something in the midst of us just for us, for one or two people. Are you with me? So prophecy, therefore, is important. Oh, I have to stop. Let me just say what prophecy is not, quickly. Prophe the gift of prophecy is not foretelling the future. It doesn't foretell the future. I'm not talking about the prophet, I'm talking about the gift of prophecy. 
It is not for foretelling the future. When Paul speaks about he met some to be prophets, that is a person. It is a person. It's not a vocal gift. A person was made a prophet. That's a different office from the gift of prophecy. So it doesn't foretell the future. Number two, the gift of prophecy is not preaching. Prophecy is not preaching. Preaching is not supernatural. In preaching, we use our minds with the anointing. Prophecy is supernatural. God gives it to you, not because you're prepared. In preaching, we prepare. In the gift of prophecy, God just gives it to you. It speaks the mind of God supernaturally. Three, the gift of prophecy is not a ministry of criticism. A gift of prophecy is not to criticize. It does not criticize. I don't know how many of you, how, how you remember all these things. Ah, I pray that God will give you grace. It is not criticism. Because some people will use the gift of prophecy to criticize, you know. <laughs> I had a story of some brethren. They wanted to deal with a brother. So they told somebody, you prophesy. <laughs> when we go to the service, brother, bring a word. And this is the word you will bring. Because we must help this fellow. And when he hears that, says the Lord. <laughs> that is cooking prophecy. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Those days, I mean, when you were younger, we, used, we, we did stuff. Who you tamweke on nabi? Brother so and so, you prepare. And when you're prophesying, please be emotional, but so that he can understand. Thus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the guy could, so we would tell, the guys will tell somebody, be so emotional. Let him, let him feel the power. And that's not what I'm talking about. So that we don't close on a wrong note. Let's close on, on this note. The threefold purpose of prophecy. The threefold purpose of prophecy. Prophecy on, serves, the gift of prophecy serves three purposes. Number one, edification. Edification. To edify means to build up. The word of prophecy coming, it comes to edify you. You may be spiritually weak and the word of prophecy comes to raise you up, not to condemn you. It is for edification, for lifting up people. Number two, it is for exhortation. Exhortation means encouragement. It comes to encourage the word of wisdom, the word of, the word of prophecy comes to encourage you. It can encourage you to holiness. Maybe you're living in sin. Maybe God wants you to consecrate your life more to him. The word of prophecy exhorts, brings you to a place where it says don't live in sin. Be, God wants you out of it. You may be discouraged and heartbroken. The word of prophecy will come to, ex, to lift you. To raise you from your discouragement and brokenness. And finally, it comes to comfort. Comfort is critical. My friends, the world is broken. Homes are broken. Lives are broken. Ambitions are broken. Dreams are broken. People need to be comforted in the brokenness they are in. Some have lost relatives. They are mourning. When this word comes forth, comfort, it comforts them. Yes, your dream may have failed, but God will give you another opportunity. Yes, they may, your life may be shattered, but the word of prophecy comes to comfort you and give you hope. 
that actually it will be well. God will make it well for you. And I pray this morning that the Lord may release a word of prophecy at some point when you need it to comfort you in your discouragements, in your fears, when you don't even know what to do. My brothers and sisters, I pray, I pray that you'll be careful. First Corinthians 14, let's close on this. First Corinthians 14 and First Thessalonians 5 verse 20. First Corinthians 14 verse 29 and First Thessalonians 5 verse 20. Let two or three prophets speak. Let the others judge. In other words, when there is a prophecy coming, you cannot all prophesy at the same time. This one is prophesying here, another one there, another one there. There must be order during prophecy. When the word of prophecy is given, it's given by a person so that others can listen. I have been in meetings where you hear something there, something there. Same time, you don't even know which one to believe. First Thessalonians 5 verse 20. Do not despise. Come on, do not despise what? Prophecies. Prophecies come. I want to argue this morning. Do not despise them. Accept them. Has God given you the gift of prophecy? Use it. If you don't use it, you will grieve the Holy Spirit. Because he's given it to you. There's somebody in the service who may need a word of prophecy. Your obedience will help this individual. When we come together in the cell groups or in the service like this, we didn't just come for tradition. We came because God will speak to us. And I pray this morning that the Lord will enable you if the gift of prophecy is the gift he has given you, that you'll begin to use it in this house. All right? I was listening to the worship team yesterday and I said, something came to my heart and it was so clear as you guys were practicing. I saw you praying here seriously. And this came to my heart that I'm speaking to them, to some of them, but they're not saying what I'm telling them. God was speaking to some of you, telling you something to tell, but you did not tell it. I don't know who it was. And God can speak to you. You meet in a cell group. And that's why it is good for us to be in cell groups, to be in church. Because God can come and speak a word of prophecy even concerning your job, even the property you want to buy, even the investment you want to make. The Holy Spirit can speak to you. Let's bow our heads and stand on our feet. I have made you too small in my eyes oh lord forgive me
prophetic word that God speaks to you takes courage and faith. Because the Lord can speak to you and you say, suppose I say it and it means nothing. People will wonder. People will do this. We don't have enough time here. I've, I would have asked each of you just to be calm and cool. And some of you would give a prophecy right now which can help somebody. Courage and faith. If you develop courage and you develop faith, the gift will begin to work among the brethren in the congregation like this or in a small group when you meet. Can you just bow you? Can you just close your eyes and, and just open your heart to him this morning? I sense deep in my heart the Lord wants to give somebody a word. A prophetic word. A word of edification. A word of exhortation. A word of comfort. May the Lord drop this in your heart. Get rid of fear. Get rid of fear. I know what I'm doing. Get rid of fear. Get rid of phobia. Be courageous and bold and have faith. Some of you have been given the gift of prophecy but you have not used it. Let this be the beginning. Let this Sunday be the beginning of the use of the gift of prophecy in your life. we thank you for the words you put in our hearts this morning we pray Holy Spirit there will be growth there will be development in the right use of the gift of prophecy that those you have given this gift in this house will grow in the same and they will not keep it because keeping it is not good you gave it to them to benefit the body so Father, whoever it may be in this house that you've called into, you've given the gift of prophecy. I pray, Father, that may you help them from today to grow in this area to the glory and honor of your name. And let's all say Amen. amen. Let's clap those hands and celebrate Jesus.